Okay, it's time to begin Unit 10C. And we'll hop right into this one. Uh, I take it you've watched the pre-class video as usual, and it's about energies this time. And we have a question, five objects below, roll down the ramp. <clears throat> so roll is critical here. We assume it's roll without slipping. And so which is the greatest translational kinetic energy at the bottom? Well, we're talking about energy. So that makes us think of the following. Uh, work non-conserving is equal to <clears throat> delta Ke plus delta Pe, which here is delta Ke translation plus delta Ke rotation plus delta Pe. And if you want to be particular, you can write out gravity and spring and whatever else you want there. <clears throat> okay, so we want to know which has this on the bottom. So if they start from rest, then what we find out is that um, if the initial Ke's are both uh, equals zero, then these become Ke finals. And this PE initial, we can choose uh, PE uh, initial is M, whatever, I guess we use capital M, that's what they use there. MGH, H is the height over here. <clears throat> and then we take this height, actually if we're taking it to the middle, we better take it from here. And then this, Uh, through the center of mass y equals zero, that makes PE final equals zero. We'll take this equal to zero because it's not mentioned otherwise. And what you find if you put us all together is that PE initial is equal to KE translation final plus KE rotation final. <clears throat> Right, and so what is Ke translation final? One half m p squared, and rotation final is one half i r squared. Oh, sorry, i omega squared. <clears throat> and so this is units kilogram meters squared per second squared kilogram meters squared per second squared. <clears throat> That's how it works out. Now, <clears throat> notice if we have this is some fraction times uh, uh, mr squared, and then I'll get the m r squared times omega squared is v squared. And so really, this is going to be 1 half whatever fraction is written out in front, right? This is, there's a one there. That's my fraction. Uh, M R squared omega squared, which is one half, whatever fraction that is. Uh, M D uh, squared because the V tangential is the same as the V for a rolling object. We did that before. And so not only that, what you find this on the right hand side here, it's equal to one half, one plus the fraction, uh, M V squared. <clears throat> okay, so we wanna know and this is the total. Uh, this part here is translation, and this part here is rotation. So it's clear if you want the biggest translation, you want the smallest rotation so you can get the biggest V. So this part, small here, implies big there. <clears throat> 
And so we want the small one uh, to get us there with the maximum translation. And so uh, what's the smallest here? Well, <clears throat> two fifths is the smallest. If you know your fractions, two and a half fifths is a half and two thirds, of course, more than a half. And so that's the smallest one, that's the one that works. Now, is this really true? See if it's really true. I have one of these virtual demonstrations for you yet again. And so let me put that on. Okay, and here we have our uh, three objects. There's a sphere in the middle, a metal ring on the outside, and a wooden block on the right. You might say, well, why metal for that ring? Well, it's denser. You need to have the same mass. If it's the same radius, wooden block is in the middle, and this uh, big white thing here is made of something that's light enough weight that its huge size gives it the same uh, light enough uh, density. And then it gives it the same mass as the other. So let's play this demonstration uh, right from our very own apartment. There they go. And you see the sphere one. Now, what does sphere winning have to do with? Uh, you can play that again if you want to. <clears throat> it was pretty short. <clears throat> so, what does sphere winning have to do with uh, translational kinetic energy? Well, that's how fast it's actually moving down the ramp, right? And so, of course, that's going to be important for the um, uh, for what's um, you know who wins. So let's try another one here. If I can find it. Um, do, 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 do. Racing disc. We just did. Uh, racing. No, this doesn't work. Um, so. This one is called racing soups. And so let's see that. Here are our two contenders. On the left, we have cream of mushroom, and on the right, we have chicken broth. <clears throat> now, this is a good test, of course, if you ever at home knew that you had one or the other, but the labels had fallen off. Uh, so, how are we going to tell which one is going to win? Clearly, the one that should win is the one that's going to have the smaller moment of inertia. Now, which do you think has the smaller moment of inertia, cream of mushroom or chicken broth? Let's uh, make it up in your mind, and then uh, here's the race. Remember, it's the cream of mushroom on the left, chicken broth on the right. And off they go, and the winner is chicken broth. <clears throat> and so, that's only because it's, what is this thing doing? Um, <clears throat> and it's only because the chicken broth, you see, it's actually usually the other one that wins. Uh, the cream of mushroom is solid, and so it all tends to stay uh, <clears throat> packed out neatly. So it's like a uniform density. Whereas the chicken soup usually tends to flow around. And what I think has happened here is it's not it's real chicken broth. In other words, it doesn't uh, spin at all, it just you know, flows down the side of the can as it's rolling down. And so that allows it to win. Sometimes if you get tomato soup, it'll actually wing itself out to the outside of the can and that goes slower because it's more like a poop. In any case, I do have one more demonstration here while I'm, um, while I'm doing this that I wanted to show you. And this is really something I should have shown you last time, <clears throat> but I'll show you it this time because um, uh, it's uh, relevant. Um, <clears throat> well, because I didn't show you, I suppose. See, we have a long meter stick sticking straight up and a short one down the bottom. Question is, which one is going to fall faster? And you think about it, 
Well, you don't have to think. You saw it's the it's the um, short one that fell faster. And I guess the big question is, why did the short one fall faster? Well, must have had a bigger alpha, right? How do you get a bigger alpha? Could be the torque, could be the moment of inertia. Well, we know the moment of inertia for a rod, uh, thin rod about its end, it's one third ml squared. Two meter sticks, twice as long, four times moment of inertia. Well, what about the torque? Well, the torque for the big one <clears throat> is gonna be about twice the mass. And the torque for the little one is gonna be, say, little one's m, the big one should be about two m, it's twice as long. And so the, uh, the torque um, starts near zero because the angle's near zero, and then it works its way up. And so at the end, the long one's going to fall faster. But on the way up, when you don't have much angle there, really you're just talking about, okay, it's twice the mass, has twice the torque, and uh, that's not enough to make up the four times moment of inertia and it just goes down slower and you can see here it hasn't gone down all the way yet. <laughs> okay, so let's go back to our camera and hit uh, the next problem. <clears throat> Which has the greatest total kinetic energy at the bottom. And we have the same three. Now remember what we had before. We had uh, work non conserving is equal to delta KE plus delta PE. Well, that's total. That's MGH. And <clears throat> that's presumably zero. So that's the total. It's just equal to that. Since that's the final, let's see, this is minus mg, so it's plus to the other side. That's is it's the initial. So it's this, and it doesn't matter what it is, right? You know, no. No I or M or R or anything else. It's just that they're all the same. So as usual, it matters in the end of the day what your <coughs> question is that you're asking. And so let's ask addition ones. Let's ask which has the greatest rotational kinetic energy at the bottom. And so again, we do the same breakup as we did before. Work non-conserving is uh, delta Ke uh, translation plus delta Ke rotation plus delta Pe. And you bend off being is the Ke final translation plus Ke rotation final is equal to mgh and you say okay um, that's the same for all uh, the translation here is uh, uh, biggest for the winner race winner, uh, which is the um, smallest I, and that's the, the ball. And this here uh, is, adds up to that. So this is 
uh, largest when uh, this is the smallest. So the largest I, the uh, biggest loser of the race. And that is the hoop. And so it has the biggest rotational kinetic energy. That's why it doesn't have so much translational because they have to add up to the same thing. And that's our, um, that's what happens at the bottom. <clears throat> so let's now look at this one. Which has the greatest speed at the bottom? Rolling without slipping, sliding down, not rolling at all, without friction, or are they both the same? Again, we think in terms of linear speed at the bottom, that's uh, energy. So work non-conserving is uh, delta Ke plus delta Pe. Uh, and the um, <coughs> We can look at the same analysis that we did before. So Ke total final is equal to Pe initial, which is MGH. And that's going to be equal to, in this case, the rolling case, it is uh, k total, and they, we did the derivation of this before. It's one half m plus i over r squared. That's from the translation. That's from the rotation uh, of the v rolling squared, <laughs> and so this is translation, and that's rotation. I put them in the same terms of the omega squared. And then over here, <clears throat> uh, slide has uh, no Ke rotation. And so Ke total is simply one half m p slide squared. <clears throat> well, because there's two terms here, V roll is less than V slide because of the extra term. It's a bigger number that's multiplying it. Bigger number here. So it has to be, the other one multiplying has to be smaller because equal to the same thing. And so, because, uh, since Ke total is the same. And that means that uh, the uh, slide without friction wins. And the reason in words, which is always good to put down, is here we share the kinetic energy between uh, the translation which is V center mass and rotation. And over here, it's uh, all translation. And so you're putting all your energy into translation, it's gonna end up going faster. So now we've gone down the slide many ways, right? We slide without friction, we slide with friction, we've done it with energy, done it with uh, F equals MA and plus constant acceleration. <clears throat> now we can roll down as well. And the fastest always seems to be this. And the slowest will depend on either how much friction you have here. It may not even go if there's too much static friction. Or the rolling, you actually don't have any kinetic friction here at all because there's always no motion at this point, right? This is rolling without slipping. There's no friction as long as these things don't change shape. That's why train wheels are made of steel and, uh, and so is the rail underneath them. It doesn't give 
if you have a little bending of this thing so it's not purely round, that's when you start losing energy. But as long as it rolls down this way, it doesn't. And uh, so there's actually no friction in this case ever, really, uh, if you've got nice hard wheels on there. <laughs> so that is about all I have on part 10. C, and that means I guess it's time to uh, close this down. I'll see you at the next unit. Hopefully I didn't forget a movie this time.